We've talked about the muscle cell and the structures that make it up. Now we're gonna zoom in inside the cell and look at the myofibrils that take up the bulk of the muscle cell itself of that sarcoplasm. And the myofibrils will be made up of myofilaments, thick and thin filaments. Those come together to form a sarcomere. A sarcomere is the contractile unit that is due to the structure of these myofilaments. The sarcomere is able to contract. It's the name of these, the, this location right here that's due to the composition of the myofilaments. So I'm going to draw these for you. Let's clear this. All right, so we've got two different types of myofilaments that make up a myo, myo, myofibril. I'm gonna start with a midline band right here. This is gonna be called the M line. Midline, sure. Then we're gonna have some protein filaments, myofibrils, um, myofilaments are literally protein fibers that make up the myofibril that compose the bulk of the, um, the cell. So let's start labeling some things here. This midline here is called the M line, right in the middle. This um, dark line right here is going to be Dark band is the thick filament, which is made out of myosin. Myosin is the protein that makes up the thick filament in muscle cells. We also have a thin filament that I'm going to draw with a thinner color. This is going to have um, a line down here as well. I'm gonna draw a line on either side here where these fibers connect. And then we've got the thin filaments, which is primarily actin, is the bulk of this. And those thin filaments are going to overlap with the thick filaments. So here we've got our thin filaments, mostly actin, but also troponin and tropomyosin. Some more things to label here. You can see there is a portion where these thick and thin filaments overlap, and there's a portion where there's just thick and the portion where there's just thin. So first I wanna label for you this entire portion here where the thick filament is located. Where there's thick filament, it's going to be dark. This is gonna be our A band, regardless of whether there's thin overlap with it or not. There's also this portion where there's only a thin filament. That's about right here. And then it's gonna go on um, to the adjacent sarcomere. So this is going to be our I band. This entire thing, I just said this word, is a sarcomere going from one, oops, I didn't label that one yet, one Z line. I know these names are like kind of stupid. Um, one Z line to the next, that entire portion is going to be a sarcomere. And this is what we're gonna, it's made up of those A bands, I bands, M line, Z line. It's going to change in how it looks um, when we have contraction occur. And that is because we're going to have the thick and thin myofilaments um, move. They're not going to shorten themselves. This myosin actually has, oops, wrong color, has heads on it. 
These are myosin heads, and it's going to pull the actin along with it and pull the actin in that direction. That's going to cause contraction. So let me show you a picture of this that's not drawn by me. This is the same thing I just showed you. Here is a sarcomere from one Z disc or Z line, same thing, to the next. That's a sarcomere. We've got our thin filaments in blue, our thick filaments in red, and you could label potentially here the A band would be this right here. This slide also then shows the detail of each of these types of filaments. The thick filaments over here, this is our myosin. So myosin molecules make up the thick filaments with these myosin heads. These myosin heads have actin binding sites. That's really important because they're going to bind to actin and allow it to pull actin along when we have contraction occur. ATP binding site will also be important for that. Thin filaments are primarily made up of actin, but also these two other regulatory proteins. So the actin here is the purple. There's myosin binding sites on the actin. Totally makes sense, right? They bind to each other. And then we've also got tropomyosin is this long stretchy one here, not really stretchy, but stretched out. And trop um, troponin is this little um, yellow one. We'll see the actions of them when we get to contraction. Okay, let's do a quick learning check here. Thick filaments are made of what? And thin filaments are made of what? Myosin, actin, tropomyosin, tropomyosin and troponin. Tropomyosin in green here, troponin in brownish. So this is going to be important, all this information when we get to contraction. This is a preview of what contraction will look at look like. This up here is a review of what I just drew in the previous video. And this is what it looks like when it's relaxed. We've got some overlap right here of the thick and thin filaments. This is our A band. The I band is over here. When we have contraction occur, the A band, um, the, the I band is going to get smaller. That light region, so the I band member is just the thin filaments. Over here, this is the I band. Overlap is going to increase when we have contraction. So that I band is going to get smaller across our muscle. That's literally the muscle shortening. And this will make even more sense, hopefully make some sense now, when we look at the molecular events that happen going from relaxed to contracted. Um, this actually, so I have this term up here, sliding filament theory. This is the discovery that the A band remains the same size, whereas the A band shortens. That led to this theory that the filaments slide past each other. And that's what we will talk about in more detail when we get to contraction.